In this short video, we're going to do several examples using the chain rule. Recall what the chain rule says. We have the composition of functions, f of g of x, meaning we have an inside function, g of x, and an outside function, f of x. And the chain rule, we want to remember that as Take the derivative of the outside, then multiply that times the derivative of the inside. And just remember when you take the derivative of the outside, you don't do anything to the inside function. So our first example, let's find the derivative of h of x equals square root of 2x squared minus 3. So on the outside, we have the radical function. And so we're going to think of that as being f of g equals g to the 1 half power. And on the inside, we have 2x squared minus 3. So the derivative h prime of x would be take the derivative of the outside, 1 half g to the negative 1 half power times the derivative of the inside, which is just 4x. Now we can't leave it with the g. So what was g? Uh, g is 2x squared minus 3. So I'll have 1 half in parentheses 2x squared minus 3 raised to the power of negative 1 half times 4x. And let's clean that up a little bit. We don't have to change it back to radical form, but at least multiply 1 half times 4x and put that in front. 2x parentheses 2x squared minus 3 to the negative 1 half power. Look at the next example. Now I put over here a little caution sign, a little exclamation mark in the triangle for us to be very careful here because we use parentheses in math for many different things. And one of the things that we use it for is function notation. A different thing that we use it for is multiplication. So we always have to be careful, make sure we understand what the parentheses represent. This might look like multiplication, but it's not. The cosine of x is not being multiplied by sine. That would not make any sense anyway. Sine by itself doesn't represent anything. It must be the sine of something. Here we have the sine of cosine of x, which tells me that I have composition and that my outer function is f equals sine of g and the inner function is g equals cosine of x. And we need to use the chain rule when we take the derivative. So p prime of x will be the derivative of the outside, so that would be cosine of g 
times the derivative of the inside, which would be negative sine of x. Because remember, the inside is cosine of x. So again, I need to replace the g. So I will have cosine of cosine of x times negative sine of x and I'll bring the negative sign out in front so then I'll have negative in fact I'll bring the whole this negative sine of x in front negative sine of x times cosine of cosine of x So let's get into the habit of being able to uh, understand what is the inner function and the outer function without writing them down explicitly. In this function, q of x equals 2 times sine cubed of x. Again, by convention, we put the cube over here, but really what this means is that q of x is 2 times the quantity sine of x cubed. So the outer function here is just going to be 2 times something cubed the inner function is sine of x. So let's see if we can work this out without having to write down what is inner and outer. So q prime of x would be the derivative of the outside. I would just need the power rule. So I'd have 3 times 2 no change to the inside, just sine of x raised to the power of 2. Now multiply times the derivative of the inside, which is cosine of x. And we will simplify that. I'll write that as 6. And then I'll use the customary sine squared of x cosine of x. All right. What's interesting about this example is that we have to be careful because the derivative of the inside function, which is just 1 minus x, is simply negative 1. And so we have to be careful about signs and we have to remember that negative sign. So first I'm going to rewrite k of x using a fractional exponent. So k of x is going to be parentheses 1 minus x raised to the power of 1 third. In fact, I'm going to write that as k of x equals parentheses 1 minus 1 times x all raised to the power of 1 third. Because I really want to emphasize that the x is being multiplied by negative 1. Well, now let's find the derivative. k prime of x is going to be of well, derivative of the outside. I need to use the power rule. 1 third parentheses 1 minus 1 times x all raised to the power of negative 2 thirds. Then I need to multiply that times the derivative of the inside, which is just negative 1. 
So we will simplify that to simply negative one third parentheses one minus x all raised to the power of negative two thirds. In this example, we could use the quotient rule, but we're not. We're going to use the chain rule. And how do we do that? We have to write it as a power. So I can write r of x as, in parentheses, x cubed plus 4 raised to the power of negative 1. So now, instead of a quotient, I have an inside function, x cubed plus 4, and the outside function, which is g raised to the power of negative 1. So using the chain rule, take the derivative of the outside, so I'd have negative 1 in parentheses x cubed plus 4 raised to the power of negative 2, then I have to take the derivative of the inside, which would be 3x squared. So I'll bring the 3x squared in front. I still have a negative 1 times that, so that product is negative 3x squared, parentheses, x cubed plus 4 to the negative 2 power. And maybe I want to rewrite that as a quotient. And so that would be negative 3x squared in the numerator and parentheses x cubed plus 4 squared in the denominator. In our next example, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this radical expression using a fractional exponent. So I'm going to have t of x equals the quantity sine squared of x plus 2 raised to the 1 half power. Let's take the derivative using the chain rule. The outside function is just the power raised to the one half. And so I would have one half quantity sine squared of x plus two raised to the negative one half power. Now I have to multiply that times the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of the inside uh, would be the derivative of sine squared x plus 2. The derivative of the constant is just 0, so I just have to find the derivative of sine squared x. And I have to remember to use the chain rule when I'm taking the derivative of the inside, because sine squared x really means sine of x squared. So on the inside, I have another chain rule to use. 
So the derivative of the inside is going to be 2 times sine of x times the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine. So I can clean that up. One half times two is one, so I can at least do that. I'll put the sine x, cosine of x in front. That's multiplied by the quantity sine squared of x plus two raised to the negative one half power. And maybe I should write that as a quotient. So I would have sine of x, cosine of x in the numerator. In the denominator, I would have sine squared of x plus 2 raised to the positive 1 half power. Here's another example where on the inside function, my inside function is cosine squared of x plus 1, I'm going to have to use the chain rule again. So y prime, the outside function is just raised to the power of 5. So using the power rule, 5 times the inside function with no change, cosine squared x plus 1 raised to the power of 4 times the derivative of the inside, well, that would be 2 cosine of x times, now the derivative of cosine x, negative sine of x. So let's clean that up a little bit. 5 times 2 times a negative sign, so negative 10 sine of x. And in brackets, cosine squared x plus 1 raised to the power of 4. All right, let's combine the quotient rule and the, the chain rule in this example. We have y equals secant of x over radical x squared plus 1. So let's change the radical to a fractional exponent. So I get secant of x over, in parentheses, x squared plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. So using the quotient rule, I start by taking the derivative of the top. Derivative of secant x is going to be secant x tangent x. times the bottom, so parentheses x squared plus 1 raised to the 1 half power, subtract off the top, which is just secant of x, multiply by the derivative of the bottom. So when I take the derivative of the bottom, that is when I need to use the chain rule. So I'll have 1 half times the inside raised to the negative one-half power. On the inside, no derivative at this point. Now, multiply that times the derivative of the inside, which is just 2x. Still using the chain rule, so I have to write all of that over 
the bottom squared. And squaring something to the one half power will just give me x squared plus one. Or maybe you go back and think about if I have square root of something and then square it, I just get the argument. So um, that is the derivative. Can I clean this up? Sure. Uh, I could even factor out a secant x. But I think all I'm going to do here is clean up the 1 half times 2x. Secant of x times tangent of x, parentheses, x squared plus 1 raised to the 1 half power minus x secant of x, parentheses, x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half power. And that will be all divided by x squared plus 1. The last two examples are a little bit different. We'd like to find the 15th derivative of y equals cosine of pi x. Now we know that the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. The derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. So there should be a pattern that we can use without having to go through and calculate all the way down to the 15th derivative. So let's just see how things start out and then try to get to a pattern. So we have y equals cosine of pi x y prime would be minus sine of pi x. Oh, but now on the inside, I have to take the derivative of pi times x. That is just pi. So y prime is negative pi sine of pi x. Let's take the second derivative. That would be the derivative of negative pi times sine of pi x. Well, that would be negative pi cosine of pi x times the derivative of the inside, which is just pi. So that's going to be negative pi squared cosine of pi x. All right, how about the third derivative? y triple prime would be the derivative of negative pi squared times cosine of pi x. Now that would be positive now, pi squared, because the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. So I'd have a negative sine from the original function plus the negative sine from taking the derivative of cosine. So that makes positive pi squared sine of pi x. and then times pi again. And so now it's going to be pi cubed sine of pi x. And we'll take one more derivative and then look for a pattern. So the fourth derivative here is going to be pi cubed cosine 
of pi x times the derivative of pi x, which is just pi. So then we're going to get pi to the power of 4 cosine of pi x. So let's make a little table. The three things that I'm looking for are, well, we're going to look at the derivative number. We're going to look at the exponent on the pi as a multiplier out in front here. And inside, it's always pi x. And we're going to look, is it a sine or a cosine? So if we think of y itself without any derivative, if we think of that as the zeroth derivative, the exponent on pi is zero, and it's a cosine. In the first derivative, we have to look at um, the exponent on pi is one, and it is negative sign. In the second derivative, the exponent on pi is 2, and it is negative cosine. Third derivative, the exponent on pi is 3, and it is positive sine. And then in the fourth derivative, the exponent on pi is 4, and it is positive cosine. So we can see that there's going to be a pattern here. The exponent on pi is going to be the same as the derivative number. So I know that the 15th derivative is going to have pi raised to the power of 15. Now, look at this pattern with the sign and the cosine. It starts off with the cosine, negative sign, negative cosine, back to sign, and then cosine again. So every multiple of 4 is going to be cosine. So let me just I say these patterns are going to continue. So when I get to the 15th derivative, the exponent is going to be 15. When I get to the 16th derivative, the exponent would be 16. And why did I go to the 16th derivative? Because 16 is a multiple of 4. So I know I'll be back with positive cosine 15th according to my pattern, the one that comes before positive cosine is positive sine. So the 15th derivative will be pi raised to the power of 15 sine of pi x. Well, I hope you found these examples useful. And if I have time, I'll put up another video with even more examples.